Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So here's something really awesome that Unity has that I had no idea existed until recently. You can get 200 bucks worth of SN tools completely for free, literally for zero dollars. Now just for fun, I made some nice mini games to show an example of what you can do with all these assets. I made a simple city builder. On this one you can place on roads, residential buildings and office buildings. There are people walking around, cars driving around and so on. Then I made a really nice car valley mini game, very much just like the flash games that I used to play as a kid. So people come in, they leave their car, and you have to park and then retrieve the car when they get mod. And I also made a fun adventure game. So this one has NPCs, a quest system, dialogue system, inventory, and more. I'll cover how I made all of these minigames in a little bit. But importantly, all the assets that I use over here, you can get all of those completely for free, as well as download the project files. Now, since I didn't know about this special thing, and I spent tons of time researching everything related to Unity, if I didn't know, chances are you don't know either. So Unity sponsored this video to let you know about it. It's the completely free student plan. Now you might already know that such a thing exists. But did you know it actually comes with a ton of awesome bonuses? I didn't know that. You can get 20% off all the assets on this store, so that itself is a nice bonus. But even better, you can get a free license for Odin Inspector and Validator. It's their educational license. This is basically the highest rated asset on the store. It's a tool for helping you make tools, super useful. I made a review on it in a previous video. It's really one of those tools that if you take your time to learn, it will massively boost your capabilities. So on the student plan, you get the Odin Inspector, which is worth 50 bucks, you get it for free. Then it also includes the Odin Validator, this one is a tool for helping you validate all kinds of things in your project, like finding some missing references, missing prefabs, and stuff like that. So it's another very useful tool for pretty much any project. This one's worth 40 bucks, and again, you can get it for free. And then it also includes these nice four Synthi asset packs. Now I love the Synthi style myself. These are really nice low poly assets. You can get the city pack, the prototype pack, and the knights and adventure packs. So all together, all of these four packs plus the two Odin assets, all of this is worth over 200 bucks. And again, you can get it completely for free. So these are the awesome bonuses of the student license that I had no idea existed. So if you are a student, definitely check the link in the description. Just sign up and get the student license. You really just need to be a student, so 16 years or older. I asked Unity if this was one of those things that is really awesome but only available in the US. And they told me, nope, this is not limited to the US. They work with a system which should work on pretty much every university globally. You just need to be over 16 and be at a verified institution and you can get this free license with all of these free awesome bonuses. There's really no downside, so if you are a student, check the link in the description and download all of these awesome buttons. Now, just for fun, I decided to make some quick mini games based on these packs. Sort of as a way to show an example of all the kinds of things you could build. I just spent a few hours coming up with some concepts and building some prototypes. With these packs, you can make a ton of games. And like I always say, experience is the most important thing in your learning journey. The more games you make, the more code you write, the better you become. So if you are a student, definitely go ahead and grab these packs and make a ton of mini games. You're going to learn a lot. So for the mini games that I built, for the first one, I grabbed the Polygon City Pack and I made a really interesting city builder game. I grabbed some building assets, some roads, people, cars, office buildings, and I ended up making this. So here I have my game world, down here I can select a bunch of objects. For example, I can select a road, and I can start placing down some roads. They automatically rotate and connect to one another. I can also place a nice crosswalk, a bunch more roads, and do a bunch of things. So that's nice. Then connect to those roads, I can place some residential buildings. Now these packs include lots of assets, so I use those to add quite a bit of variation. So for the residential buildings, I can place a bunch of them, and they're all pretty randomized, so they look quite nice. Then I also made a simple pedestrian system, so people start spawning from the buildings and they start walking around. They really just follow the road, so they spawn there and they start following some waypoints. So it's all very simple, but it does help for giving the city a little bit of life. I did the same thing for the cars, so they spawn and they drive around pretty randomly across the city. Then I can also place down some office buildings. And there you go, they start generating some money, so there's a simple money system. And I can place down a park where the people can go, enjoy themselves, and so on. So yep, just with these mechanics, I can make a nice city come to life. So I can add all kinds of things, intersections. And yep, here it is, a nice simple city builder. We've got residential buildings, we've got streets, we've got cars, we've got people, we've got residential areas, and some fun in the park. So it's pretty simple, but it does look like a city coming to life, so it does look pretty nice. I built this project in just a handful of hours. Having some nice visual assets does help speed up the development process quite a bit. In the end, it does look really good. As opposed to if I was making this without any assets, this would just look like gray boxes everywhere. Or I would have to make the assets myself, which would take much, much longer. So especially for me as a programmer, it helps a ton to be able to use some nice visual assets. Another thing that helps is, like I said, experience. So for making this for the grid building system, that was actually quite simple. I just reused the exact same grid building system that I made previously. You can go watch my tutorial on it. So here I built the exact same thing. Underneath this whole thing is an entire grid map. So all of these positions, you can see the size of the buildings, the size of the office, the streets, and so on. All of those are occupying one grid position. So I just select a building, I go and click somewhere, and it checks the grid position under the mouth and simply spawns the actual building. And for the building types, I'm using scriptable objects. These are really awesome for defining types of anything and storing any kind of data. 
Now for the people in the cars walking around, that was actually the tricky bit. Normally I would implement some kind of pathfinding system. So having some way of like a character spawns from here and goes to work in this office, I would use some kind of node pathfinding system. I would probably reuse the exact same one that I used in my game, Blueprint Tycoon. But over here for this quick prototype, I really just made it semi-random. So on each of the prefabs, like this, the road prefab, I just placed some objects in the corners to define the sidewall positions. Same thing on the residential buildings. So there's a spawn position inside the building, then they walk outside and they move either left or right. So the whole thing is semi-random. Each of these points has a connected point. So this one is connected to this one, this one connected to this one, this one to this one, and so on. So basically it just spawns here and looks at that point, looks at the connect point, moves to a random connect point, and just keeps going until it finds the end. So it's pretty basic. It's a relatively dumb system, but it does work for making the city come alive. Then the cars work in very much exactly the same way. The roads have points for the various driving positions, which again, they are connected one to another. Then just checks, okay, this road has another road in front of it. So just connect this point to this point, this one, this one, and so on, and just keep going straight. And on the intersection, it really just has a ton of points, all of them connected. Then the cars just pick a random point and just simply follow it. Again, very simple system. If you want, you can download the project files to see all the source code that makes this game happen. The download does not include the visual assets, but if you get the student license, if you get those assets and you import them into the same project, everything should load exactly like this. So if you want, you can take this prototype and then build upon it. Maybe add some kind of scoring system, maybe add a ton more building types, or just grab the car and the pedestrian systems and make some kind of open world game come alive. Then for the second game, for this one, I looked at the prototype pack. This one has a ton of really awesome assets, really a ton of stuff. Like the name implies, it is perfect for making pretty much any prototype in any genre. This one specifically has a really gorgeous car. It looks just like a Lamborghini, it's really nice. So I wanted to do something with this car, some kind of driving game. And after thinking about it for a while, I ended up with an idea for making a nice car volley game minigame. I loved playing these kinds of games as a kid. There were so many flash games about parking cars, I loved it. So here in the game, the customers come in and they park their car, they leave it and they go. Then I gotta go inside, I gotta drive it and I gotta park it somewhere. So let's go ahead, park it over here. Then the NPC is going to go inside to do whatever it is. More people with more cars keep on coming. So they arrive, they stop. I gotta grab, I gotta park it somewhere. Now this asset pack is all about solid colors and solid shapes. So I thought it was fun to make both the character and the car match. That way it doesn't need to have some kind of license plate on top, which would look a little bit ugly. It can just be like this, just solid colors for both the characters and the cars. So yep, more people keep coming in. I gotta keep parking the cars to make sure they don't cause a line over there. So just park them somewhere. And yep, after a while, people start coming out. So that one is the green one. So let's go ahead, pick up his car, drive around, go straight in there. I deliver the car and he goes away. And there you go, a nice, happy customer. Now more are coming in. They're going inside. They're coming outside and so on. So I got to keep doing it. You got to keep parking the cars and then deliver them to the people. So there it is, a nice, simple, fun gameplay loop. Pretty tight core gameplay loop. It's actually quite amazing. That's why this worked so well back in the Flash games. So you have a ton of people, let's go ahead and deliver all those cars, and it's all really nice. Now for building this one, for the car controller, normally I would probably use a proper asset that was made for a car controller. Making a proper car controller actually takes quite a bit of work. But since I wanted this video and these mini games to be able to distribute the project files, for that I couldn't use any third party assets. So I ended up just building my own car controller. It's a super simple car controller. Really just has a rigid body and then keeps track of some kind of velocity, acceleration, turning, and so on. It only just use that to modify the velocity on the rigid body, do some rotation and so on. So it's all super basic. Same thing for the player character. This is yet another one, super basic character controller. Just listens to input, set some kind of animation, and just moves the transform and rotates it. Super basic. Then for entering and exiting the car, that is also some pretty simple logic. Just as for input, see if the character is inside a car. If not, then basically just as a physics query in order to find the cars close by. So it just cycles through all of those colliders and looks for the ones that have the car controller. If so, then this one is a car. Then just finds the absolute closest car. It hides the visual animator for the character and simply enables the car to be controlled. Then the NPCs, as they spawn and they drive their car, they're actually using the exact same car controller. So this car controller right here, this script basically has a function to receive the inputs. And then both the player controller and the AI controller, both of them use this function in order to set the inputs for the car. The AI just checks if the car can move forward, and if so, just presses the inputs in order to move the car forward. And for solving the car, the way that works is basically by using a collider. So the NPC spawns over here and starts moving forward, and if it gets to the second collider, then automatically stops. If not, it checks if there's a car in front of it, basically just as a raycast forward. If it hits a car, then it doesn't keep moving forward, just stops. And if it is within this area, it stops, leaves the car, and continues going. And if it is down here, then it keeps waiting until one of these cars is empty so it can move forward. And for the exits, very much the exact same thing. So the character just moves through a bunch of waypoints, gets there and waits around, and then does a physics query over here looking for a car. And as soon as there's a car with no one inside it, and yep, there you go, it just goes and despawns.
So yep, it's a really simple gameplay loop. Logic is all pretty simple, but it does actually play pretty nice. It's no wonder that the Flash games based on this mechanic, those were very successful. That's because the core gameplay loop, while being simple, is actually quite interesting. So if you want, you can take this as a base and expand upon it to make a really fully fleshed out car valley game. Oh, and by the way, also remember how you can mix these assets. You don't have to use just one asset pack for your entire game. You can grab assets from multiple packs. Personally, that's one of the reasons why I love the low poly style. You can grab tons of packs, all of them on low poly style, and mix them, and it will look great. So, for example, in this case, you could use the Cars from the City pack, and that would work just fine. You can go ahead and download the project file to see how this whole mini game is done. And for the third game, for this one, I used both the Knights pack and the Adventure pack. These are really great medieval looking packs. And for this one, I sort of made an adventure game with quests and story. So here I am, I've got a player character that I can move around. There's some NPCs walking around and some of them standing around. So I can walk around this village and as I walk up to something that is interactable, like this character over here, I can see a nice little pop-up. This is pretty much exactly the same interaction system that I covered in a previous tutorial. It's basically all based on interfaces and colliders. So just do a recast and find all the objects around that have some kind of interactable interface. If so, then just show the interact action and start the interaction. So in this case, I can chat to this NPC right here. And as soon as I interact, yep, it engages a nice dialogue system. So the camera changes and the NPC says something. So in this case, what a great day. Are you enjoying today? Yeah, sure. Well, keep enjoying it. So yeah, there you go. Very simple interaction system. The dialogue goes between two characters, can have a bunch of text and so on. The way this whole thing works, actually quite simple. So here I've got a dialogue system and I've got a function to start a dialogue. It basically takes in two characters. These are interface, so it can work with characters or non-character things. And then it takes an array of dialogue single. And this one really just takes a character. So is this the character zero or character one talking? And then just has a string for the text. And since this one is an array, it can receive multiple messages. So for the example of that NPC, here it is. So I call the dialogue system to start the dialogue. I pass in an array of dialogue single. Then character zero says this, then says this, then character one, which switches the camera, says this and so on. So even though this is a very simple structure, I can actually do quite complex logic. Then since I made it using interface, it can actually use multiple things. So instead of talking just to NPCs, I can go up here into this nice statue thing. I can inspect it, and if there you go, the camera switches in order to look at the statue. And I can see some kind of message, so this is a fascinating statue. It's very well made, lots of detail. And if there you go, back outside. So a simple system, and by using interfaces, is actually extremely versatile. And by the way, if you don't know about interfaces, if you don't know what they are, you can check out my complete C-Sharp course where I cover interfaces, generics, and literally everything, starting from the absolute basics going all the way up to advanced. So yep, here I've got my character in my nice city, and there's another NPC over here that wants to talk. So let's see, talk to it. So, hi there, I need your help. My cheese is missing, okay? So what kind of cheese? It's a cheese wheel, you can't miss it. Okay, that's interesting. So I'll be on the lookout for some cheese. And here there you go, quest added, and the quest is find the cheese. So this also has a nice quest system. Here is the quest system script. It really just contains a list of quests to so, sew, so this is a scriptable object. So if I want to make more quests, I just need to make more scriptable objects and define all the logic for it. Then the quest system just receives a scriptable object and makes that one the active quest. And then the NPC has some logic for checking, is the quest already completed? If so, it says a message. If it is not already completed, but has already started, then say this message, and so on, just like that. So over here, this character is looking for some cheese, so the quest is find the cheese. And the cheese just so happens to be right down here. Once again, it's using the interaction system, the exact same system. So let's go ahead and pick up the cheese. And yep, it gets added over there, so we have a nice inventory system. Here it is, it's another super simple, very tiny script. So it literally just has a list of item SO. So again, a script object for all the item types. And for updating the UI, that is also using lots of events. So again, events are another thing that I cover in my complete C-sharp course. So here I've picked up the cheese, now let's go back, let's talk to the character again. And there it is, I found your cheese. Thanks so much, I was really hungry. Yep, there you go, quest completed, to find the cheese. So yep, these are the three fun ideas that I decided to make with these assets. You can download all the project files and then build upon it. If you get the student license and you get all those assets, if you do and you import them into this project, all of them should be linked correctly. But these projects are really just examples. With these assets, you can make a near infinite amount of games. So for example, on the city pack, you can make some kind of game kind of like GTA. So you could make it drive around doing some missions using weapons. Or perhaps you could make some kind of driving game kind of like Crazy Taxi. Maybe some kind of police simulator game. Then on the prototype pack, with that one, you can make a really nice first-person shooter, something that looks really nice and stylized. I really like the look on this pack. I think it looks really awesome. I actually use it in my turn-based strategy course, and I think the final course actually looks really nice. Or perhaps you can also make a survival crafting game kind of like Valheim. So you could use my house-building system and all of these modular parts to make some really nice lived-in houses. Then on the Knights pack, you can make pretty much anything medieval. So it could make something mini Skyrim, could be some kind of farming game, or something like Stardew Valley. And with the Adventure Pack, you can make something quite similar, but with Vikings. 
So the amount of games that you can make with all of these assets is truly a massive amount. And importantly, you can get all of these packs simply for free. You can get the assets, plus Odin Inspector and Validator, and a 20% off on any assets on the store. All in all, that's 200 bucks worth of awesome assets you can get completely for free. All that it requires is just that you are a student. Now looking at my analytics, most of you are between 18 and 34, so I'm guessing there's a ton of you that can take advantage of this awesome program. Definitely check it out with the link in the description and sign up to get your free assets. And then you can download the project files for this video to see three nice mini games that I built. You can inspect on source code and maybe use these as a base to build something nice. Alright, so thanks for watching, go grab some free assets, and I'll see you next time.